chapter 14. Don't be troubled. You trust God, now trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's home, and I am going to prepare a place for you. If this were not so, I would tell you plainly. When everything is ready, I will come and get you, so that you will always be with me where I am, and you know where I am going and how to get there. No, we don't know, Lord, Thomas said. We haven't any idea where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus told them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you had known who I am, then you would have known who my Father is. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, Philip, don't you even yet know who I am, even after all the time I have been with you? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father, so why are you asking to see him? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say are not my own, but my Father who lives in me does his work through me. Just believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe because of what you have seen me do. The truth is, anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, and even greater works, because I am going to be with the Father. You can ask for anything in my name, and I will do it, because the work of the Son brings glory to the Father. Yes, ask anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world at large cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. Chapter 6. Take care. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired because then you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give a gift to someone in need, don't shout about it as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I assure you, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone, don't tell your left hand what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in secret, and your father, who knows all secrets, will reward you. And now about prayer. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I assure you, that is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father secretly. Then your Father who knows all secrets will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as people of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered only by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, because your Father knows exactly what you need even before you ask Him. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done here on earth just as it is in heaven. Give us our food for today, and forgive us our sins, just as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your Father will not forgive your sins. And when you fast, Chapter 24, as Jesus was leaving the temple, chapter 23, then Jesus said, chapter 22, Jesus told them several other stories to illustrate the kingdom. He said, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a king who prepared a great wedding feast for his son. Many guests were invited, and when the banquet was ready, he sent his servants to notify everyone that it was time to come, but they all refused. So he sent other servants to tell them, the feast has been prepared and choice meats have been cooked. Everything is ready. Hurry. But the guests he had invited ignored them and went about their business, one to his farm, another to his store. 
Others seized his messengers and treated them shamefully, even killing some of them. Then the king became furious. He sent out his army to destroy the murderers and burn their city. And he said to his servants, The wedding feast is ready, and the guests I invited aren't worthy of the honor. Now go out to the street corners and invite everyone you see. So the servants brought in everyone they could find, good and bad alike, and the banquet hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to meet the guests, he noticed a man who wasn't wearing the proper clothes for a wedding. Friend, he asked, how is it that you are here without wedding clothes? And the man had no reply. Then the king said to his aides, Bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the outer darkness, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Then the Pharisees met together to think of a way to trap Jesus and to saying something for which they could accuse him. They decided to send some of their disciples, along with the supporters of Herod, to ask him this question. Teacher, we know how honest you are. You teach about the way of God regardless of the consequences. You are impartial and don't play favorites. Now, tell us what you think about this. Is it right to pay taxes to the Roman government or not? But Jesus knew their evil motives. You hypocrites, he said. Whom are you trying to fool with your trick questions? Here, show me the Roman coin used for the tax. When they handed him the coin, he asked, Whose picture and title are stamped on it? Caesar's, they replied. Well then, he said, give to Caesar what belongs to him. But everything that belongs to God must be given to God. His reply amazed them, and they went away. That same day, some Sadducees stepped forward, a group of Jews who say there is no resurrection after death. They posed this question. Teacher, Moses said, if a man dies without children, his brother should marry the widow and have a child who will be the brother's heir. Well, there were seven brothers. The oldest married and then died without children. So the second brother married the widow. This brother also died without children, and the wife was married to the next brother, and so on until she had been the wife of each of them. And then she also died. So tell us, whose wife will she be in the resurrection? For she was the wife of all seven of them. Jesus replied, Your problem is that you don't know the scriptures and you don't know the power of God. For when the dead rise, they won't be married. They will be like the angels in heaven. But now, as to whether there will be a resurrection of the dead, haven't you ever read about this in the scriptures? Long after Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob had died, God said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So he is the God of the living, not the dead. When the crowds heard him, they were impressed with his teaching. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, they thought up a fresh question of their own to ask him. One of them, an expert in religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important love your neighbor as yourself. All the other commandments and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Then, surrounded by the Pharisees, Jesus... Chapter 9. Jesus went on to say, I assure you that some of you standing here right now will not die before you see the kingdom of God arrive in great power. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John to the top of a mountain. No one else was there. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance changed, and his clothing became dazzling white, far whiter than any earthly process could ever make it. Then Elijah and Moses appeared and began talking with Jesus. Teacher, Peter exclaimed, this is wonderful. We will make three shrines, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't really know what to say, for they were all terribly afraid. Then a cloud came over them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly they looked around, and Moses and Elijah were gone, and only Jesus was with them. As they descended the mountainside, he told them not to tell anyone what they had seen until he, the Son of Man, had risen from the dead. 
So they kept it to themselves, but they often asked each other what he meant by rising from the dead. Now they began asking him, Why do the teachers of religious law insist that Elijah must return before the Messiah comes? Jesus responded, Elijah is indeed coming first to set everything in order. Why then is it written in the scriptures that the Son of Man must suffer and be treated with utter contempt? But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and he was badly mistreated just as the scriptures predicted. At the foot of the mountain, they found a great crowd surrounding the other disciples as some teachers of religious law were arguing with them. The crowd watched Jesus in awe as he came toward them, and then they ran to greet him. What is all this arguing about, he asked. One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son for you to heal him. He can't speak because he's possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever this evil spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground and makes him foam at the mouth and grind his teeth and become rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, You faithless people, how long must I be with you until you believe? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy. But when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, Since he was very small. The, the evil spirit often makes him fall into the fire or into water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us. Do something if you can. What do you mean, if I can? Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly replied, I do believe, but help me not to doubt. When Jesus saw that the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Spirit of deafness and muteness, he said, I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy lay there, motionless, and he appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd. He's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet, and he stood up. Afterward, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, Why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? Jesus replied, This kind can be cast out only by prayer. Leaving that region, they... six. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was walking through some grain fields, his disciples broke off heads of wheat, rubbed off the husks in their hands, and ate the grains. But some Pharisees said, You shouldn't be doing that. It's against the law to work by harvesting grain on the Sabbath. Jesus replied, Haven't you ever read in the scriptures what King David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God, ate the special bread reserved for the priests alone, and then gave some to his friends. That was breaking the law, too. And Jesus added, I, the Son of Man, am master even of the Sabbath. On another Sabbath day, a man with a deformed right hand was in the synagogue while Jesus was teaching. The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees watched closely to see whether Jesus would heal the man on the Sabbath because they were eager to find some legal charge to bring against him. But Jesus knew their thoughts. He said to the man with the deformed hand, Come and stand here where everyone can see. So the man came forward. Then Jesus said to his critics, I have a question for you. Is it legal to do good deeds on the Sabbath, or is it a day for doing harm? Is this a day to save life or to destroy it? He looked around at them, one by one, and then said to the man, Reach out your hand. The man reached out his hand, and it became normal again. At this, the enemies of Jesus were wild with rage and began to discuss what to do with him. One day soon afterward, Jesus went to a mountain to pray, and he prayed to God all night. At daybreak, he called together all of his disciples and chose twelve of them to be apostles. Here are their names. Simon, he also called him Peter, Andrew, Peter's brother, 
James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, son of James, Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. When they came down the slopes of the mountain, the disciples stood with Jesus on a large level area surrounded by many of his followers and by the crowds. There were people from all over Judea and from Jerusalem and from as far north as the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed, and Jesus cast out many evil spirits. Everyone was trying to touch him because healing power went out from him, and they were all cured. Then Jesus turned to his disciples and said, God blesses you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is given to you. God blesses you who are hungry now, for you will be satisfied. God blesses you who weep now, for the time will come when you will laugh with joy. God blesses you who are hated and excluded and mocked and cursed, because you are identified with me, the Son of Man. When that happens, rejoice. Yes, leap for joy, for a great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were also treated that way by your ancestors. What sorrows await you who are rich, for you have your only happiness now? What sorrows await you who are satisfied and prosperous now, for a time of awful hunger is before you? What sorrows await you who laugh carelessly, for your laughing will turn to mourning and sorrow? What sorrows await you who are praised by the crowds, for their ancestors also praised false prophets? But if you are willing to listen, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, pray for the happiness of those who curse you, pray for those who hurt you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn the other cheek. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. Give what you have to anyone who asks you for it. And when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. Do for others as you would like them to do for you. Do you think you deserve credit merely for loving those who love you? Even the sinners do that. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, is that so wonderful? Even sinners do that much. And if you lend money only to those who can repay you, what good is that? Even sinners will lend to their own kind for a full return. Love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them. And don't be concerned that they might not repay. Then your reward from heaven will be very great, and you will truly be acting as children of the Most High. For He is kind to the unthankful and to those who are wicked. You must be compassionate just as your Father is compassionate. Stop judging others and you will not be judged. Stop criticizing others or it will all come back on you. If you forgive others, you will be forgiven. If you give, you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full measure, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more and running over. Whatever measure you use in giving, large or small, it will be used to measure what is given back to you. Then Jesus gave the following illustration. What good is it for one blind person to lead another? The first one will fall into a ditch and pull the other down also. A student is not greater than the teacher, but the student who works hard will become like the teacher. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying, friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye? When you can't see past the log in your own eye. Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log from your own eye. Then perhaps you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is identified by the kind of fruit it produces. Figs never grow on thorn bushes or grapes on bramble bushes. A good person produces good deeds from a good heart, and an evil person produces evil deeds from an evil heart. Whatever is in your heart determines what you say. So why do you call me Lord when you won't obey me? I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then obeys me. It is like a person who builds a house on a strong foundation, laid upon the underlying rock. When the floodwaters rise and break against the house, it stands firm because it is well built. 
But anyone who listens and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against that house, it will crumble into a heap of ruins. Chapter 7 When Jesus had finished saying, Chapter 4. Dear brothers and sisters, I love you and long to see you, for you are my joy and the reward for my work. So please stay true to the Lord, my dear friends. And now I want to plead with those two women, Euodia and Syntyche. Please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, my true teammate, to help these women, for they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. And they worked with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are written in the Book of Life. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. If you do this, you will experience God's peace which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, let me say one more thing as I close this letter. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right. Think about things that are pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all you learned from me and heard from me and saw me doing, and the God of peace will be with you. How grateful I am and how I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but for a while you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to get along happily whether I have much or little. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. For I can do everything with the help of Christ who gives me the strength I need. But even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulty. As you know, you Philippians were the only ones who gave me financial help when I brought you the good news and then traveled on from Macedonia. No other church... Okay, YouTube viewers, there is there is one other passage in the Bible that I want to show you, but I forget what chapter it's in in the book of Exodus. So while I while I search for it on my iPhone Bible, I strongly urge you, pause this video and do whatever you need to do. No need, no need to thank me, I hope this helps. Spell honor. Anna is spelled no. A N N. Spell honor. Anna is spelled A N N A. Honor your father and mother.
chapter 19. The Lord also said to Moses, Say this to the entire community of Israel. You must be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must show respect for your mother and father, and you must always observe my Sabbath days of rest, for I, the Lord, am your God. Thank you very much. I hope this helps you. But I am going to play that one more time for you. Chapter 19 The Lord also said to Moses, Say this to the entire community of Israel. You must be holy because I, the Lord your God, am holy. Each of you must show respect for your mother and father, and you must always observe my Sabbath days of rest, for I, the Lord, am your God. Do not put your trust in idols or make gods of metal for yourselves. I, the Lord, am your God. When you sacrifice a peace offering to the Lord, offer it properly, so it will be accepted on your behalf. You must eat it on the...